that the world really needs energy. If we if we have see the development in the in the rest of the world, we need to figure out how to how to live with more energy consumption than we have today. Now, and oftentimes there's a financing gap that is kind of leaving good solutions that could save or make people money and simultaneously hack carbon um, on the table. What are the next needs? And I think the most pressing one is a larger kind of RD. I say RDD and D, I think I'm the only person who uses that, but we mean everything from lab scale research, which we think can be really important, to federal support for deployment of these technologies. And so I think that that is a really, really big piece. I think that um, getting a carbon tech market up and running is really important, right? Having some sort of value for CO2 makes such a big difference. So we've got to accelerate this. Tony, uh, what is your experience about accelerating and bringing this to scale? Well, to me, the the challenge here is is less the technological innovations and much more directly on the scaling mechanisms, the business model things that allow us to do scaling. And uh, and a part of the reason that I left academia, part of the reason I left the private equity world and and went into this farming thing is that that we have. You know, the easiest case should be you're going to make a whole lot more money doing something different, making much more nutritious food that people are going to be healthier eating, and uh, and uh, 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 why on earth doesn't the whole world just change to do that? You know, it's 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 kind of a no-brainer. So we said, okay, we want the ones that are going to be attractive to follow on commercial investors, so they have a real chance of getting to scale. We want the ones that are going to have a hard time raising money because we don't want to crowd out traditional investors if the company is is already ready for that type of support. And we want the ones that are going to make a really, really big difference on greenhouse gas emissions. I'm not against mitigation, quite the contrary, we need that too. But if we don't start doing air capture and negative emissions in general, pulling it back by biological means and technical means as fast as we possibly can, the overshoot will be a lot larger. Yesterday in the talk I said, we are a car going way too fast and we are going to hit the guardrail. Right now, we are operating in a world where there's a horrible headwind to all of these technologies, to all these businesses that want to make, you know, to clean up the atmosphere. As soon as we start putting, you know, a price on carbon, there's going to be a tailwind. All of a sudden, these businesses that are relying on philanthropic dollars are going to be making profits. And, and you know, uh, there's seven billion economic agents out there, whether they're consumers or producers or entrepreneurs or investors or philanthropists, and all of a sudden they're going to be moving in the right direction rather than moving in the wrong direction. It's, it's, it's black and white.